Good morning. Good morning. I'm gonna guess that if you are a content creator that you have felt overwhelm, the swirl, the frustration, the resentment, maybe even the anger, and you've probably said something like, you know, this algorithm sucks and the algorithm is against me and the algorithm is keeping anybody from seeing my page. Well, I'm here today with Claudia again, and we are talking about how to help us actually generate people to see our content without feeling like the, the, algor the algorithm is against us. Claudia, thank you for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. I love this topic because search engine optimization is many times overlooked by entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and it certainly has a lot of <clears throat> complicated technicalities. But there is something uh, every content creator can do and should be doing, which is understanding the search intent. OK. What does that mean? <laughs> well, I knew you were going to ask that. Um, the search intent is the, the mindset you have when you are going to run a search on a web, on a, on a search engine. So you're either uh, on an informational mindset. It is you're starting to run a search about something. You have absolutely no idea and your search is pretty broad, right? You, other, you also have what they call navigational, which is you have a website, you type it di directly, thelady.com, and you get there. Then you have the commercial search, which is when you are getting close to a decision and you start comparisons. So you're getting closer to a purchase decision. And finally, you have a transactional search, which is when you <clears throat> have already decided, I am going to buy this, and, and that is your search. Okay, I'm so, taking notes while we go because this is this these are such gems and I really want people to be able to see mm -hmm. down all of your ideas. So we have the general search, which is when you're starting out. That's very informational. It's informational. You have mm -hmm. navigational, mm -hmm. you have commercial and transactional. <clears throat> and then the commercial is all about comparing like, okay, I'm choosing between these two or three things. Let me keep going back to them. Yes, and it's and it's still a, a, a search and know that no no decision has been made. I am going to give you an example in, in, a, in a moment. Okay. So the thing is, the other day you and I were talking as usual about content and you talked about the customer journey, right? Mm -hmm. When you have the, the, the like, the know, the like and the trust. The thing is the know, the like and the trust is lying underneath this general search, That's okay? Right. Because the moment I start to run a search, depending on what I type, you will show up or not. Mm -hmm. So you first have the general search and, and depending on the results, we with our products and services come pop up in the, in the search results. So it's very important <clears throat> that you create content for all these mm. possible steps. You know, not only for the know, the, the like and the trust, but also for information to transaction. So that you can kind of push the sale or answer the questions the person have to make a, a purchase. So <clears throat> the importance of, of the search intent is, and going back to your original remark of the algorithm, mm -hmm. is that no matter what the algorithm changes or, or how they tweak it, Search intent is inherent human. It's the way we search. So mm. that is not going to change. Okay. Okay? So you always have to think, what what is this person looking for? Is he on a very initial search or is he or she <clears throat> ready to buy? And create content for that. Because the search engines work using that search principle. So if I give you an example, Let's suppose um, I'm invited on a long weekend somewhere, okay. you know, and I haven't done short trips in a long time, so I will need a bag, a travel bag. My first search might be travel bag or weekend travel bag, which is a very general key search there, very broad. So <clears throat> when I see the re Results. I will start fashion. I'm very trendy. Um, I will most probably like a, a leather mm -hmm. handbag, mm -hmm. and because I'm so trendy in fashion, I know it's going to be heavy, so I want it with wheels. Mm -hmm. So then I will have my next search will be a weekend travel bag or weekend leather travel bag with wheels. So what you see 
is as you get closer to a purchase or a transactional situation, your keyword tends to be longer and more specific. Yes, yes, yes. Okay? And you need to bear that into account in the content creation, but also when you do the search, the, the optimization of your text. So if you have a website that is a WordPress, you can have a plugin that's called Yoast, and Yoast will allow you to set the keyword and mm -hmm. also the text that appears in, a, in Google when you do a search. And that you can play. But the most important thing is that we need to write text for humans, not for algorithms and not for robots and not for the whims of technicalities. You know, we, you need to think that your text, it, it has to have a quality because otherwise, no matter what you do to show up, if you don't have quality, people won't come back to your site or won't, won't stay there with you. Yeah, so um, this this is important because if you're always generating content at that informational level, it's never going to become more nuanced. And then they're not going to get to know you like you and trust you. So we do have to kind of create content on this um, spectrum almost. Yes. And the good thing is that you don't need to recreate topics because you have a topics, let's suppose, going back to the, to the weekend uh, leather handbag, um, I can create content for the informational purposes, for the uh, comparison purposes, and for the transactional purposes. Mm. So, for instance, uh, 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 it's always the same topic. So, one of the comparisons would be um, leather handbags versus, um, I don't know, um, cloth handbag, yeah, yeah, canvas yeah. handbags, uh, or the fly, the fly things that you use. For, for airports. Um, the other thing you can say is wheels versus not wheels, or the, the 10 things you need mm -hmm. to know about your handbag. And then when you go to transaction, you can go like, let's suppose, the, at, at the advantage of a Samsonite versus a Gucci bag. Mm -hmm. That is really close to decision, mm -hmm. assuming that Samsonite and Gucci would be competitors, right? Mm -hmm. So you can you can go and you need to be um, outgoing and and with 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 your content you need to answer the questions your your potential clients have in mind and not think if I answer this question I will lose my client you know right because some people think like I I don't really want to tell them this because it might shoo them away and I have an example that I want to share. Um, a woman I know has a, a, a product, oh, I'm sorry, a service that's really for vegetarians and vegans, but mm -hmm. really you don't ever find that in her content. So by the time I dove into her content and I found that it was, and I bought the product on service and it was for vegetarians, I was like, but I don't wanna be a vegetarian. Mm -hmm. And I never really understood why she didn't tell that uh, upfront because if I knew that in advance, I never would have bought it, but it, it would have, it might have repelled me, but I wasn't the right customer for that service anyway. Well, the problem there is, as usual, the buying person. I know. Right. Right. It always I comes down to the buying that persona. Because really, the buying persona is at, at the core of everything. But um, let's suppose um, the guy who wrote They Ask You Answer, Marcus Sheridan, has a wonderful example about what you should write or not. So, for instance, he and his partners had a swimming pool business. So they would come to your house and they had this um, fiberglass swimming pools, okay? And he created content back then about comparing fiberglass swimming pools versus concrete swimming pools mm -hmm. openly. So you want people you want people to be informed about what they are buying because an informed buyer doesn't complain Right, right, Those right. Doesn't ask for refunds. Right. Okay, and knows, and then they ask the right questions. So you really need to peel off that layer of of jealousy with your your business, mm -hmm. etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and be open because you don't want these things to pop up later. For instance, you know, she could have written that her products are so good that people who are not vegan but are allergic could also benefit from consuming these products. Yes, yes. You know, and that is because she 
first doesn't know her buying persona enough to feel that she can be open exactly hasn't done market research to understand that there are opportunities by using the right information yes. and is unnecessarily jealous about her information and yeah. we can't be jealous you know you need to be open yeah I, it's you know from when i work with my clients i want them to know when they come to work with me inside the content creator studio they're not going to get a million plug and play options for social media because i don't think that that works Whenever, no. whenever you get a plug and play thing, you wind up massaging it so much that you might as well have freaking written it yourself, right? So I wanna be very open. There's no plug and play things, but I'm going to teach you at the foundation, at the root, how to create content that works for you and for your audience. But imagine that I hinted in, in their customer journey that I was going to give you everything you needed to plug and play you would get in there and you would feel like you got swindled. And I agree, like you, we don't want unhappy yeah. customers. Yeah, but you know, and, and the, the things are, terms are such as plug and play can be catchy, Yeah. but they tend to fire back because the yes. understanding of plug and play is different for everybody, That's you know? So and That's a lot so of people think that plug and play means I don't have to do the work. That's right. Or that and it's even, one size fits all. Yes, and even if you have plug and play, you still have to adapt it to your industry. You still have to do the research. Yes. You still have to show up. So how relative is that blog and play? I rather say it made, I rather I rather say at your pace, you know, uh, which is the case of the content creator studio. Um, but yes, blog and play is is tricky. So okay. when we're talking okay. about creating a spectrum of content so that it does the heavy lifting for you, mm -hmm. people watching this might be thinking like, oh my God, this is one more thing I have to think about. But I really, and I know that you're into this too, once you put something out there and it's rich with these search terms, it's searchable forever, whether you're using Pinterest or yeah. a blog or YouTube. It really, if you layer your content with these words, it can continue to do the heavy lifting for you. Yes, and not only that, the thing with search engine optimization, which is optimizing text, not only to be found, but to be enjoyed and to be legible, okay? Um, um, if you do pay, pay any form of paid promotion, pay Google ads or Facebook ads, or if you really want to throw your money at LinkedIn ads, do that. Mm -hmm. The moment you stop paying, the moment you stop getting the traffic generated by, by payment. Instead, when you do keyword, good keyword and keyword search, and you bear search intent in your, in your head, and when you write, that continues to work for you behind that's the real concept of evergreen that's a real concept of passive income because it starts once it starts to work and it starts to gather uh then it will work out for you but we but have, you to, have go back. to understand what you're going to do we have to go back and think about also you said this in the beginning what words are humans searching for and yeah. I, I was on a call this week inside the studio, there was a, a wonderful Pinterest trainer who came in and she helped a couple of people see that, you know, people aren't using the words like, I want I want a specific kind of coach. Like nobody would be looking for a content coach. You want, what, what people are looking for is the word, they wanna batch their content. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what they're, they're not even really looking to plan their content, they wanna batch their content. And so what are people, what are your people looking for when they wanna find you? My people want to outsource their marketing. Outsource their marketing, yeah. Yeah, and that's what you help people with. Hey, can you tell people a little bit about what you do? Because I've been talking about what I do. <laughs> what I do is I help clients who don't want to outsource their marketing. Yeah. Well, the thing is, um, entrepreneurs who have been in business for a year, more longer than a year tend to see gaps in their marketing. Mm -hmm. And even if they work hard and put the time and all that stuff, they don't see the results of their efforts. Mm -hmm. but what I do is I come in and I see the gaps and, and try to work them, you know, to, to, to eliminate them. Focus on their proprietary solution or the, the, the main process they have to take their client from A to B. Mm -hmm. So in general, what I do is I, I work with what you already have. I don't reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. which already takes that feeling, oh, I'm again starting from scratch. No, I work with what you have and we try to improve or streamline or beautify whatever mm -hmm. you have that is already working. Um, one of the things I want to say about Claudia, because I've worked with her specifically, is 
she's got this laser focus. She can kind of see things that you can't see because you're too close to it. And she's so into the nuance of all of it. And she's so experienced that she can, it's almost like she sees the fissures and she sees the holes that we are too close to our own businesses to see. So if you are looking for someone to help you do the heavy lifting in to help, help you get your marketing to do the heavy lifting for exactly. you, she's the person I highly recommend her. We're going to keep keep doing these conversations because she's such a wealth of knowledge. But please check out Claudia if you want to help streamline your marketing. Um, your, your, I'm going to put your website here. Mm -hmm. And what else do you want people to know? What's one last thing? I will thing? hire you to write my bio, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, a thing that, I, that I've had a lot this week, and it's not related to the specific topic with which we started the conversation, is that um, people want to outsource their marketing. They are, I, I only wanted to do what, what I, why I started my business, decorating homes, selling homes, mm -hmm. uh, reading the tarot, uh, mm. whatever, you know? The thing is, there are six areas in your business. You have marketing, you have sales, you have human resources, you have tech, you have administration, you have finance. If one of them is not working, you are going to see it. You're definitely going to see it, most probably in your bank account, you know? So marketing is with which everything in your business starts. And marketing is your relationship with your customer. Mm -hmm. And relationships have different stages. You know, you have the stage when you don't know that person. And you get closer, you try to, to do more things and get closer and get to know that person better. So why would you want to outsource your marketing? There are certainly things you can outsource, like email, the, the email marketing or the website management. But the, the relation itself, the getting to know your client, the putting the time to have solid marketing mm -hmm. foundations, which is understanding your customer, your message, your offerings, and your strategy to attract clients, you can't outsource it. You should look for help to do it because it's something that it becomes richer if you have somebody helping you. But please, for God's sake, don't outsource this. Yeah, when I've ever outsourced my marketing, what I have found is it comes back not with my nuanced voice, not with the words I would use. It just doesn't feel like me. And I wind up again going in and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. So what I said in the comments, you think you want to outsource your marketing, but what if you didn't have to? What if marketing was easier and it could work better for you? And that's what Claudia helps you yes, do. Definitely, yes. Okay. Yes. You know, stop looking at marketing as a duty. It's really, mm -hmm. marketing can be fun, but uh, you have to stop looking at it as a duty. Yeah, it really, um, I used to feel the same way because I used to feel like it was, uh, I didn't have the understanding of it. Once you get the understanding, which is exactly what you help people with, it's it's actually fun. It's something I really. Yeah. It's part of my business. I really look forward to. So I love these conversations, Claudia. Thank you for making time. Right. For Thank you for inviting me and talk oh, to you welcome. soon again. You're Bye. Right. And it, I will put your website down here. So if anybody wants to connect with Claudia, please do her. The this, the one service that she offers that I know that I have worked with her on is um, so incredible, and it can completely change not only how you run your business, how you work with your clients, but also how you do your marketing. Just. We, we are saying it makes your marketing, it does the heavy lifting for you. It lets your marketing do the heavy lift. So go check Thank her you. out. Thanks, Claudia. Thanks, Jen. Bye. Bye.